Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As you come to our worship service today, maybe you're carrying a heavy yoke. We just want to let you know that this is the right place to be, that we are lifting up Christ. We are lifting up Jesus. And Jesus is the one that says, come unto him. So as you come today, we pray that something would be said, sung, preached, or prayed that would lighten your load today. Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service at Bethany Baptist Church. As we come to our offering today, uh, I have a passage of scripture that I'd like to read. And some of you may say, this is kind of a heavy scripture to read during the offering. You know, the offering should be light and it should be ju uh, jubilant and joyful. And I, and I do, I do agree with that. Uh, but I, I want to uh, read the scripture and draw a point from it. And it's found in Hebrews chapter two and verse three, and it's talking to a, a group of uh, Jewish believers who are under persecution. Uh, but uh, it says here, how shall we escape? And that's just talking about escape judgment. If we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And, and so let's take out the heaviness in the passage and, and, and let me bring out two words or three words. So great or four words, I guess. All right. I need to go back to math, right? Uh, four words. So great a salvation. So great a salvation. Wow. This salvation that you and I have was prophesied by the prophets in the Old Testament. That it was seen by the disciples in, in the life of Christ when he died, was buried, and rose on the cross. This is a great salvation that we have. And, and, and I heard the song, uh, you know, an incredible God deserves incredible praise. A great salvation woo, desires or invokes a great response. And so as we come to the offering today, would you give in light of this great salvation that we have? As you look at us giving, we should give not because somebody's twisting our arm, not because somebody has a gun to our head, not because somebody is trying to uh, bogart us into giving. But one of the things that we should see is that we have a great salvation. And since we have this great salvation, let us respond by giving unto the Lord in appreciation for this great salvation. We thank those of you who continue to send your uh, offering in by mail, we thank those of you also who go online and give. Thank you for your faithfulness. And I hope that it's done, you know, again, not because you're being coerced or you're being uh, forced, but today as you give, give in light of this great salvation that God has provided for you. You know, salvation is free. Amen. <laughs> it's, you know, salvation is free. And we thank God for that, that we don't have to pay for salvation. But the psalmist said, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits unto me? And so God has blessed us. And in some way, we can show our appreciation as we give to him. And we realize that everybody can't give and we understand that. And so as I pray and bless the offering, I'm going to pray for those who are unable to give, that God would touch your finances in a special way. Oh, I'm not talking about name it and claim it. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, demanding from God. 
I'm just asking that God would pour you out a blessing out of the, the infinite treasures of his storehouse. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this offering today. We thank you for those who are able to give. And Lord, we pray that they would give in light of this great salvation that they have. Out of pure love and appreciation for this great salvation that you have provided. And that you would bless them, Lord, for their giving. And Lord, we pray for those who are unable to give. And we, our hearts uh, resonate with them just as much as it resonates with those who are able to give. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless them. And Lord, if they are having financial difficulties, I pray that you would touch their finances and that you would allow them to be able to take care of their financial needs and that you would even pour them out an extra special blessing. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hi. Greetings. Greetings. Greetings from Staten Island, New York. Greetings from Staten Island. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're so glad to be able to uh, share with you all what God has been doing through our ministry. We are the Adams family, <laughs> and our, our, our ministry is 2010 Church. Uh, this church was started um, in May 19th, on May 19th, 2010. Uh, and we just celebrated our 10 year anniversary. Amen. Praise God for his faithfulness, for his goodness to us. We started on a college campus here in Staten Island and uh, we were having uh, weekly services and, and discipleship meetings and uh, we were ministering to, to students and then um, Several years after that, God had put on my heart that we needed to shift and to go into homes and be in small groups. And so uh, we we moved out of the campus uh, about five years ago, and we moved into homes, and we were meeting in homes in small groups. And God was moving in that way, and so it was then we were on a campus, then we were in homes, and then God had put in my heart about two years ago to go online and start having our church online so that we would have church service online and that the small groups and those who were a part of our church and would be part of our, and those who would also be a part of our church in the future could be able to join us online altogether. And so we started to have church online and it has grown to the point where we are able to reach people not only from Staten Island, New York but in other parts of the country in other parts of the world we have people who are watching us in the Middle East we have people who are, are watching us uh, in places in Africa we have, we have people who watch us primarily in Brazil we have a big a group of, of people who are part of our service in Brazil, part of our ministry. And so it has it has expanded and, and, and I can say that we have about a hundred small groups or we call them video groups, over a hundred video groups around the world. And so God has really been ministering and we are a unorthodox, unconventional kind of a church. We, we don't have a time, we don't have a, a, a day, a lot of times we, we meet on Sundays or we meet on, on, on Mondays, um, but we don't have necessarily um, one particular day, but we, we are a church that is led by the Holy Spirit, you know, and so, and so whenever the Holy Spirit leads us to have our, our service, that's when, that's when we have it. And we also believe in doing church as a family so that it's not just the pastor and he's there administering and leading, but leading alongside of his family. We believe that the family is the first ministry and that each one, that us as adults as well as the little ones, are all a part of the church. 
the, the church now, not the church just tomorrow, but, but now as well. And so uh, we do church together live, you know, for, for everybody to <laughs> so see. everything and, is possible. And it's it happens. <laughs> not always convenient, and, and anything can happen. But we believe that that's what God wants us to do. And it's not necessarily what we think everybody should do, but this is what God has put in our hearts mm -hmm. to do. Uh, we believe in the importance of the family being modeled for the world to see. Because the world, really, in, in our day and time, doesn't know what a family should look like. Doesn't know mm -hmm. the order of a family. And so, doing church together is very important to us and it is a central part of the work that we do. We also are a part of media, media and social media missions, which means we are taking the gospel digitally throughout the earth. Um, and that, that might be through Instagram, that might be through Facebook, that might be through YouTube. Uh, and it could be through Zoom, but in, in different ways, we are ministering to people digitally. We are ministering to people online and are praying for that ministry to, to, to grow and become uh, even more of a focal point of our ministry, as well as um, film, uh, media ministry. This is something that we believe that God has called us to, to reach people and, and, and entertain them. The sectors of the world that are off limits a lot of times to churches. A lot of times churches are just in the four walls and, and are not breaking outside of that and reaching people where they are. And so God has put into our hearts to reach people where they are. And also a very core part of what we do is we have a ministry that makes people aware of the evils of human trafficking and how to protect themselves from this evil uh, we are we consider ourselves modern day abolitionists fighting against uh, human trafficking which is in the world which is actually uh, in in the world today there are more slaves alive today than at any point in history and so it is a it is a and really out of the more than three million one million are children yes which is just just for sex slave, sex slavery of children, babies and children. Which there's no words for how evil that is. Mm -hmm. And we know that God has called us to be those who go out and restore and give love and care to those who, who are in need and, and to prevent this from, prevent this from happening to, to other to other people. And so right right now really our focus is awareness and we trust that God will even grow it from that. But we believe that awareness is a key part of preventing trafficking, human trafficking from from happening to innocent people. Because there are many people, even politicians and, and different uh, interviews that were being the, the last ones were being uh, seeing, watching lately, people that are like uh, well around, um, how can I be like the, the last one that we saw with Tim Ballard from uh, Underground, it's called Our, Our Rescue. If you guys can go and look it up on um, Instagram and, and their website, and I always put on my Instagram, the, the one that we do the service, always we always uh, put in things about it. And he was just interviewed by someone very well known, and the person didn't know until like the beginning of this year. We're in 2020. So there are a lot of people who don't don't, don't still know. are not aware, and, and maybe you're not aware. Yeah. But uh, that's, so that's why we're doing this to yeah. make people more aware, so that there can be more lights out there, getting people um, the truth about this and preventing people from being enslaved yeah. Yeah. in this in this wickedness this is a crime that is so dark but is uh, is hidden in plain sight right is in, in everywhere 
and it's not just in third world countries it's everywhere everywhere a lot and america is the number one now became the number one uh how do they say consumer not the number one right. like the, the biggest uh numbers of pedophiles are here so yeah. it's very sad and and, and ne? so we believe we have a responsibility yeah. to make people aware and to fight against this um, this evil. So th this is these these are our ministries yeah. that we are a part of and that we are doing. This is who we are. So this is what we just wanted you all to to, to, to hear. God bless you all. We love you. Thank you so much for your support, for your prayer support, for your financial support. We're forever grateful to you for that. We love you. God always, bless. Always everything comes at the right time. Oh yeah. yeah every, every, every prayer, every contribution. So God has been faithful to us and we're very grateful to each one of you that prayed for us and has blessing us in our ministry and our family. What do you guys want to say? Bye. Say bye bye. Say thank you. Thank, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless Pastor Glaze and, and Pastor the, Glaze and the whole church. <laughs> the whole church. We love you guys. Everybody. We love you, Nana. We love you. Nana. <laughs> we love you, Nana. Nana. That's Nana's church, right? Say bye bye. Bye bye. bye. <laughs>
I feel that I'm so far from you, Lord. But still I hear you calling me. The simple things that I once knew. The memories are drawing me. I must confess, Lord, I But my soul is not satisfied. Renew my faith, restore my joy. And dry my weeping eyes. Take me back. saints. We're continuing today dealing with the names of God. This morning our journey takes us to Yahweh Sabbath, which is the Lord of hosts. We're going to begin by reading Psalm 24 verses 7 through 10. And we read that uh, it says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Yahweh Sabaoth. The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. As we consider this passage, we see that the call is to the ancient gates of Israel. The picture here is that of a king who has come back from battle victorious. And as he stands before the walls of the city, in particular, the gate of the city, uh, somebody shouts out, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And so the idea is that open up the doors so that the king who just won the battle, the victorious king, can come into the city. So that is the backdrop of this particular passage. But you may notice that it says in here, because we can ask, who was the king? You know, was the king Solomon? Was the king David? Was the king Josiah? Was the king Hezekiah? You know, who was this king? And so we are not left to guess who the king is because it tells us right in the text. 
the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. And so we realize that the Lord fights battles and that when, as the Lord fights these battles, he comes back to the ancient city or we could say uh, he comes back to the gates of heaven. And, and, and the cry is, is to open up the gates so that the king of glory, so that Yahweh Sabaoth can come in. And so today, we're talking about the Lord of hosts. We're, we're talking about the God of the armies. Now, as we consider this uh, word or this phrase, uh, Yahweh Sabaoth, this word Sabaoth is very interesting. It is used in the Old Testament about 250 times that we see this word uh, Sabaoth appear in the Old Testament. Now, the word actually means to assemble. Wow. Sabaoth. It means to assemble. So how do we connect that to the Lord? Well, when you bring down that holy name, that, that name Yahweh, the, the self-sufficient God, when you bring that name down and you couple it with Sabaoth, it refers, oh, somebody help me this morning. <laughs> it refers to the God who can assemble angelic beings together to do his bidding. Let me run that by you again. That's so nice, I gotta say it twice. That it means to assemble, the word sabio, to assemble. And when it's used in conjunction with the word Yahweh, it refers to the God who can assemble together angelic beings to do his bidding. And so this lets us know that he is the Lord of the armies, that when the angelic host comes and as we read the scriptures, we see that there are 10,000 times, 10,000 times, thousands, thousands of angels. That, that, that there's so many angels that we can't even put a number on them. Yet and still, there is a God who can bring them together. That they might be uh, worshiping in one place, serving in another place, doing this in one place, but there is a God who can bring them together. And that is Yahweh Sabaoth. I'm reminded of when Jesus was in the garden and uh, the soldiers came to take him. And Peter, wanting to defend Jesus, pulled out a sword and, and cut off one of the soldiers' ears. And Jesus told Peter, put up your sword. <laughs> put up your sword. He said, if I wanted to, I could pray to my father and he will send 12 legions of angels. What was a legion? A, a, a legion in the Roman army was 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers. And so what Jesus is saying that, uh, hey, hey, these soldiers have come to take me. These soldiers have come to do battle against me. But if I wanted to, I could cry out to my father, the, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Sabaoth, I could cry out to him and that he would send in the blink of an eye uh, 36,000 to 72,000 angels to come and do his bidding. Oh, this, this, this phrase, this, this concept, uh, Yahweh Sabaoth. And so I, I asked the question, do you know him? Do, do, do you know him as Yahweh Sabaoth. Do, do, do you know him as the God who can garner myriads of angels to do his bidding? See, we've been talking about the names of God. We talked about uh, Yahweh Roy, the Lord that, that goes on shepherding. We talked about Yahweh Jireh, the God who provides. And so we, we've looked at him in, in those two aspects and we've ask the question, do you know him like that? Do you know him as your shepherd? Do you know him as the God who can provide for you? So today I'm asking you, do you know him as the one who can fight your battles? We're going to look at 
four situations this morning, and we're going to see how Yahweh Sabaoth showed up in each one. And so the first one that we want to look at as we refer to the Old Testament is Hannah. And Hannah knew Yahweh Sabaoth as the one she could turn to in the time of sorrow. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, we see that Hannah was being harassed because she was barren. She couldn't have a child. And uh, her husband uh, was uh, also married to another lady. And the other lady began to harass her. The other lady began to make fun of her because she could not bear a child. And we see in chapter 1 and verse 8 that Hannah was grieved. She was grieved in her spirit because of the harassment that she was facing. Have you ever been harassed before? Has anybody uh, ever made fun of you? Has anybody ever talked about you and, and made you feel bad? Well, that, this is the case that we see here with Hannah, that she was being ridiculed, that she was being talked about because she couldn't have a child. And her heart was, was heavy for two reasons. For one reason, because she was being harassed, but the second reason was because she couldn't have a child. But in 1 Samuel chapter 1, in verse 11, look who she prays to. In verse 11, it says that she went before the Lord and she wept as she prayed and she vowed a vow and said okay now look now, now look watch this now watch this she could have prayed to Yahweh Jireh she could have prayed to Yahweh Rapha she could have prayed to uh, Yahweh Shama she could have prayed to Yahweh Shalom but look who she prays to look specifically at Hannah and who she prays to and she said, O oh Lord of hosts, O oh Yahweh, Sabaoth, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and forget not thy handmaid, but will give thy handmaid a male child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And we see in chapter 1, in verse 20, it said, Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come, about after uh, Hannah had conceived, that she bore a son and called his name Samuel, uh, Samuel, because I have asked of him of the Lord. That God went before her. Now, 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 no, now notice what God does. Here, here she was he, she, she was grieving. Here she, her heart was heavy. What does the Lord do? The Lord went before her. She prayed to the Lord of hosts. He went before her, and what did he do? He touched her womb, and she was able to have a child. And, and, and not only that, but you know what else the Lord did? He stopped the mouths of her enemies, right? Because they could no longer ridicule her. They could no longer make fun of her because the Lord had fought, whew, the Lord had fought the battle for her. Thank God. Has, has, have, have you ever been, uh, as I said before, have you ever been grieved? Has your heart ever been heavy because of some opposition that you received? Learn the lesson from Hannah that you can go and notice she prayed specifically to the Lord of hosts. And the Lord of hosts heard her and went out and fought the battle for her. I think of... Uh, a lady that we all have heard about at some point in time, Corey Tinboom, who was in a uh, German concentration camp. And, you know, she was just uh, victimized in, in so many ways. And yet and still, while people around her were, were getting bitter and getting upset, that she kept her focus on the Lord. 
And, and the Lord got her through that. And, and, and we know that uh, after she got out of the concentration camp that uh, God used her all over the world to be a witness for him as to his saving power, as to his grace, as to his strengthening power. And that when she was in that camp and all those wicked things were going on around her, she prayed to the Lord and the Lord helped her to get through. Who was she praying to? She was praying to Yahweh Sabiel, the Lord, who is the one who fights our battles. The second person that I want to talk about who knew him as Yahweh Sabaoth would be Samuel. And Samuel knew him as the one who rights all wrongs. Have you ever been done wrong in your life? Has anybody ever taken advantage of you? Oh, as I think back over my life, I can think of many times that I felt like I was taken advantage of. And, and you know, I wanted to lash out and I wanted to get revenge. Uh, but when we realize that God is the one who rights all wrongs, God is the one who goes before us and fights the battles, that we can take confidence and peace in knowing that he will fight the battle for us. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 25 that when Israel was in the wilderness, uh, that uh, they came to a, a certain place where they ran into the Amalekites. And, and they wanted the Amalekites to, to uh, let them through uh, a, a passageway. But the Amalekites actually attacked them. Now here, here God had called them out of Egypt and God was leading them through the promised land and we have the Amalekites that came in Deuteronomy chapter 25 and attacked them. And we see in Exodus chapter 17 and verse 16, the Lord swore that he would take vengeance on them. He said, what? <laughs> you mess with my people? Look, 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 look watch this. I, told, I called them out of Egypt. I guided them through the wilderness. And you mean to tell me you're going to mess with my people doing the things that I told them to do? God said, oh, I'm going to get you back. I'm going to get you back. And, and we see in, in 1 Samuel uh, that God called Saul to get the Amalekites back for what they did. Now, this happened hundreds of years ago, hundreds of years ago. And God said in 1 Samuel chapter 15, in verse 2, uh, well, let's look, look at verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me uh, to anoint thee as king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. <laughs> Listen to this. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. So who, who's speaking? Not Yahweh Shammah, the Lord is present. Not Yahweh Shalom, the, the Lord is our peace. Not y Yahweh Rapha, the Lord who heals. Look who's speaking. Thus saith Yahweh Sabaoth. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Now, see, God got a good memory. You know, we, we might forget. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like uh, the, the lady who uh, uh, they asked her, does she ever think about the hereafter? And she said, I think about the hereafter all the time. You know, every time I go into another room, I, I ask myself, what am I hereafter? Right? So, so we forget, right? We forget. But God doesn't forget. And God remembered what the Amalekites did to Israel when they were in the wilderness. And thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid in wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. And then God tells him to go down and take care of the situation. God will see to it that any time that, that we've been wronged, God will see to it that he writes that, that situation. Oh, my friend, the, in Romans it tells us, uh, don't take vengeance, but, but let God take vengeance because 
He can do it perfectly. He can do it in a way that we can't do it. And you know, the thing is that I, I like about uh, this, this concept here that we see in, in, in this idea that he writes all wrongs, that God saw <laughs> what the Amalekites did. He saw what they did to Israel. And uh, God, man, God sees it. When people do us wrong, God sees it. You know, I, I heard the story about a burglar and uh, he broke into this house and uh, there was a parrot and, and the parrot kept saying, Jesus is watching you. Jesus is watching you. And the burglar kept on uh, doing uh, what he was doing, uh, ripping the house off. And the parrot said, Jesus is watching you. Jesus is watching you. And finally, the burglar uh, stood around and said, why don't you just shut up? You know, Jesus is not here. And he said, Jesus is watching you. And, and, and over in the corner was a big Doberman. And uh, uh, the parrot said, sick him, Jesus. <laughs> and, and the dog came after the burglar. Uh, so God is watching. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes, you know, we don't even have to say sick him because God is going to get him. Just like that, that Doberman, you know, got the burglar. You know, God, God is watching and he's going to take the vengeance. He's going to right the wrongs. We just have to put it in his hand. The third situation was David. And David knew God as one who would fight his battles. He realized that, that the Lord was the one who would, would go before him. And we all know the story about David and Goliath and how Goliath was out there. And I, I like to go back to a term back in the 70s, right? Uh, he was selling wolf tickets, you know, and when I talk about wolf tickets, you know, that that means he was bragging about how great he was. Right. And, and challenging uh, people. He was challenging the armies of God and uh, the, the, the Israelite army. You know, they looked at him and they wondered, uh, you know, who, who's going to stop this fool. Right. He's out here. Nobody can beat him. You know, he's a nine foot giant. We don't even have anybody that can contend with him. And so David's dad uh, sends him to the field uh, with some uh, food for his brothers. And as he comes to feed his brothers, he sees Goliath out there, as I said, selling wolf tickets. And he said, you know, who is this guy? Who is this uncircumcised circumcised Philistine that, that taunts the armies of the living God? And, and David's brother said, look, why don't you just go on back home? And they, David said, isn't there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is, is there not a God that we need to stand up for? Is there not a God that we need to speak up for? And so David challenged the giant. And as he challenged the giant, you know, they, he met him in the, in the battlefield, on the battlefield. And, and notice what David says in chapter 17. And it says, uh, and the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David uh, said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword <laughs> and with a spear and with a shield. Whew. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I come to you in the name of Yahweh Sabaoth, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And we don't even need to go read the rest of the scripture because we know what happened, that David let the Lord fight his battle. Now, yeah, he did have a slingshot, right? But think about this. This guy over here, he got a sword, he got a shield, he got armor, he got a helmet, and he's nine foot tall. What chance does David have with a sling? Not a whole lot of chance. And so we have to assume that it was the Lord of hosts, the one that David said. He said, you come to me with a spear and a shield, and I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies, the God who brings angels together to fight his battles. David knew him as one who would fight his battles. In the last example that we come to, 
we go to the New Testament. And in the New Testament, we have the book of James. James chapter 5. And there were some poor people that were out in the field working. And they were being ripped off. And they were being abused. And they were being taken advantage of. And the, uh, the people had no one to plead their cause. They had no one to intercede for them. But notice <laughs> what, what James writes. James says that these people that were out there being ripped off financially, he said, behold, in James chapter 5 and verse 4, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is kept back by fraud, that you have fr defrauded these individuals. You have taken advantage of them. Listen what it says. Their cries and the cries of them that have reaped have come to the ears of the Lord of hosts, have come to the ears of Yahweh Sabiel. <laughs> have you been, ever been ripped off? Right. Just somebody taking advantage of you. you know, they, 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 they've taken something that belongs to you. I, I remember uh, one time uh, I, I went to work on a Monday and I got in my car and, uh, you know, I had uh, another car because we had kids. You had a family car that we went to church and stuff on the weekend. But I had this old little beetle bug that I would drive back and forth to work. And uh, I got in the car and noticed that uh, somebody had ripped my radio off, right? Had broken to my car and, and ripped my radio off, right? And I'm driving up. And, and as, <laughs> as soon as I get to work, my wife calls. And she, she said, is, is, did somebody take your radio out of your car? I said, yeah, how did you know? She said, because the police called and they said that they have a guy who confessed to taking car, uh, radios out of cars over the weekend. And I thought to myself, man, that's pretty good, right? That, I mean, I didn't even know it was gone and this guy went and confessed to doing it. And I got my radio back, by the, by, by, <laughs> by the way. But I, I thought about Yahweh Sabio, the Lord who fights. That, that, was a, that was a battle that I didn't even know about, right? I mean, you know, I, I, I didn't even know that battle had happened over the weekend. But the cries, like I said, the cries of the poor in the book of James have come before the, the ears of the Lord of hosts. And he's going to take care of the situation. And so any time that you've been taken advantage of, any time that you've been ripped off, just realize that there is someone who knows about it and that there is someone who will fight your battles. As I close today, I'm reminded of the song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And in this song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, there's something that's directly related to what I've been telling y'all this morning. Right. We all know uh, that that first verse, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amidst the flood of mortal ills prevailing and still our ancient foe does seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate on earth is not his equal. Uh, but I, I, as much as I like this, like that verse, I like this one. I like, I love this one. Did we in our own strength confide? So if you try to fight the battle on your strength, in your own strength, he says here, our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Who is this, right? Who is this? Who, who, who is this, the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing? Just ask who that might be. Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabaoth. Lord Sabaoth is his name. From age to age, the same. And he, this says must, but he will win the battle. Oh, I think Martin Luther, 
caught a vision of Yahweh, Sabio. Martin Luther saw that uh, there's a God that goes out and fights our battles. There is a God that realizes that, that, that we can't fight our own battles. There is a God that realizes that we don't have strength to fight against the devil. You can, you can blind the devil, you can tie him up, and you still can't beat the devil. In our own strength. But thank God, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh, Sabio, he will win the battle. Let me come to you now, my brothers and sisters, and first of all, I want to talk to the saints and say, do you know Yahweh Sabio? Right? Again, we've been talking about these names of God, and, and God is one uh, being, but, but he gives us these names so we can reflect on the different characters and the characteristics and the things that he does. And so this morning, we, we saw him as the, the Lord of hosts, the Lord who fights the battles. And are you going through a battle right now? Are you struggling? Uh, have somebody ripped you off? Have somebody caused you to cry, caused you grief, and you want to go out and you want to take vengeance on them? Let the Lord fight that battle for you. Ask him to come. Ask him to help you fight that battle. And maybe you're here today and you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life. And you don't have anybody to fight your battle. You, you have to fight your own battles. And we see, according to Martin Luther, one of the consequences of fighting our own battles is that, you know, we lose. You know, we can't beat the forces of darkness in our own strength. And you need somebody to fight your battles for you. And you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. If you would join me in this prayer uh, as I close this time out, and if there's never been a time that by faith you've prayed and you've asked the Lord to come into your heart, I invite you to pray this prayer after me. Nothing magical or mystical about this prayer. It's just a prayer of faith to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you want to fight our battles, that you want to go out and before us, Lord, and take care of our enemies. But Lord, if we don't know your son, if we have never asked your son to come into our lives, then we don't have anyone to fight our battles. And so he, he fought the battle for, on the cross. He won the victory on the cross. And when he rose again, and so if there's someone here that has never asked Christ to come into their life, I would ask that you repeat this simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for fighting that battle on the cross. Thank you for rising from the dead and providing for me eternal life. And right now, I ask you to come into my life and to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you prayed that prayer and uh, you want to get more information about that decision that you made, give us a call here at 412-242-3255 and we will get back to you with some information to help you grow in your faith. God bless you for joining us today.